Um, sure thing. So uh, welcome everyone to our uh, first uh, virtual meeting um, after our kickoffs uh, that are on our roadmap leading to Tour de Cure on October 18th. I'm pleased to uh, welcome you and uh, we're especially happy to have uh, Chef Brandon Leonard who is joining us from Rockland um, where he is the uh, uh, executive Fit Chef with Fit Chef, his uh, catering company in the Rockland area. And uh, Chef Leonard is going to be preparing a recipe straight out of Diabetes Food Hub, uh, which is our amazing resource. Danny, if you just want to show that on the next slide. Ah, there's Chef Leonard. And uh, it's at uh, www.diabetesfoodhub.org. And that's an amazing resource for uh, thousands of recipes uh, and special tools like uh, helping you shop and create menu lists and uh, quite a few other uh, really great innovations uh, and all about uh, eating healthy. And uh, Brandon has had an interest in healthy cooking and healthy uh, nutrition for a while. And Brandon, I'm going to turn it over to you at this point so you can say a little bit of, uh, more about that and how you got inspired to uh, start cooking healthy. Perfect. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining the call tonight. Uh, super amazing, super blessed that I can be live with you tonight, uh, hosting and being partnered with ADA. Um, I am Chef Brandon Leonard, and I've been a chef for almost 12 years now. I can't believe it's been that long, but I've had the pleasure of uh, being in hotels, working at country clubs, uh, cooking for thousands of people, and now I get to pay it forward by coming into your home and featuring one of our amazing recipes tonight. It's the seared pork wine. You know, it's that late summer dish uh, with a peach salsa. Peaches are kind of going out of season, so, you know, go out there right now after this call and just buy them right now. Make the salsa, make the dish, uh, super flavorful. Uh, a little brief background on me. You know, I was um, overweight as a kid, a lot of fast food. Grew up in the Midwest. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge uh, how to cook. It was all processed foods. Um, you know, and then I just had the confidence one day to change my lifestyle. So what that means is I started cooking for myself and I just kind of played around with food for a while with my family, my parents, my sister, and I kind of got good at it and I really, really enjoyed uh, cooking for my family. I'm like, wow, you know, I am really great cooking. You know, I, I don't know what I'm doing all the time, but I'm having a lot of fun and the food's coming out great. Um, long story short, you know, I lost 94 pounds because I turned into a chef and I changed my life around. So if I had not become cooking, um, I would probably, you know, I was pre-diabetic. It runs in my family. Uh, that's part of my, my lifestyle. That's my passion now is to teach uh, the healthy, active lifestyle portion. Um, one of the stigmas, you know, that I hear all the time, and that this was me as well, is, okay, I'm going to eat healthy the rest of my life. I can't have good food. Well, that's really not the case. Um, a lot of stuff out there will tell you otherwise, like, oh, it's going to be boring. I can't have all these foods, and I just have to eat strict the rest of my life, which is not true. Um, we're still able to eat whatever we want as long as we're in a, you know, an 80-20 environment. You know, I'm eating 80% nutritious all the time, and then 20%, 15% is something that is comfortable pizza, because we still have to live into a life, right? Um, so I'm very, very happy to be in in house with you. This is my little studio apartment. Uh, you don't have to be in a professional kitchen to cook great food. Uh, the rundown tonight is going to be a little bit of background. You know, we're going to zoom in on a few things, how to make the salsa. It will be a close-up shot, how to cut peppers, peaches, a little bit of basic cutlery with a chef's knife. We're going to put the salsa together, and then I'm going to show you the pork loin. We're going to do a quick sear. 
Uh, we're going to slice it and we're just going to talk about tips and tricks on how you can do this uh, in your house as well. So real quick, uh, we're going to talk about some spices, okay, and we're going to talk about seasonings. So real quick, I always love to use uh, Himalayan pink sea salt, okay, those of, that are conscious about sodium. Um, you can use kosher, but I always use pink sea salt. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, garlic salt as well. You can use fresh. Uh, lemon pepper is really one of the key ingredients that I love to use with my healthy meal prep and healthy lifestyle. Clean, uh, very low sodium, very high in flavor, fresh lemon. Uh, there's always the Mrs. Dash uh, salt free. So you can still get great flavors out of these uh, different kinds of seasonings. Uh, we have pan spray. You can use coconut oil if you'd like as well. But those are some of the tips and tricks uh, that you can have with you. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the salsa. So the reason why I'm doing salsa first is all about cross-contamination. So if I have my cutting board, right, and I started with my raw pork loin, you know, this board would just be contaminated. I'd have to wash it, and then we'd have to make the salsa. So whenever I'm cooking, I love to start with my, my fresh ingredients that are okay to be on the board first. That way I don't have to stop, and sanitize, and move forward. It's just all about your speed, right? So we're going to bring the camera in a little bit. We're going to zoom in. Okay. So here we have a nice, uh, this is a crossbreed. It's like a strawberry peach as well. Farmer's Market Organic. You don't have to buy organic, but this is much better flavor. Uh, we have a green bell pepper right and then we have half of a red onion this is going to be in your salsa ingredients so what i like to do with peppers right there's always a seed in the middle right here there's a few ways you can do it however the best way and the cleanest way is to go ahead and cut your knife and go on the four sides that way you're not dealing with the seeds everything's clean cut you can chop this little piece off as well so all the seeds are intact, right? So once we have our peppers, I'm just going to demonstrate one for you. I like to flatten it out and I like flesh side up, right? So all you're going to do is just cut little strips all the way through. Hopefully you can still see that. Let me know if you can't. So we're going to get it all even and then we're just going to make nice little dices all the way through make sure you tuck in your fingers and that is your diced green pepper you can pick it up with your knife right right into the bowl simple along with that is one half red bell pepper okay so you want to do a small dice so you're just going in all the way down not cutting all the way through to the end with that hole Take your knife, slide it in, and then you're just gonna go cross cut. So now you have these little nice peppers that are already diced for your salsa. So that is gonna go into the bowl as well. And like I said, this is just a demonstration. So peaches, right? Has a core in the middle, it has Little seed, so you're gonna cut all the way through in the middle. It's gonna pop out just like that. Go ahead and discard that. So some people like to leave this middle piece in, I don't. So I cut it in half, right? So now you have the cord exposed. You wanna go ahead and cross. And then now you have this piece, core is removed. So you wanna make a few cuts, kind of like cutting an apple. Now you have these nice, even pieces, right? And you're just gonna go ahead and cut through, kind of like you were doing the onion. So now you can have little diced peaches. So there's that. In the recipe, it does say to remove the peel. You can remove the peel of the peach. However, I just washed this, and I like to keep the peel on because of the texture and the color as well. So we're going to flash forward, we're going to come in, here is the peach salsa. So we're just going to give that a good old mix. And you notice the green 
is the bell pepper, but also I added a little bit of arugula. So with cooking, you can pretty much be creative. I felt arugula would have been nice and peppery that I wanted to add, so I put that in there. Uh, to that, we're gonna add a little bit of pink sea salt and then extra virgin olive oil. That just gives it a nice little sheen. This is extra virgin. If you want to get more creative, you can add lime zest, you know, with a citrus, kind of a fresh uh, late summer peach salsa. It's up to you. Get creative. Just because it says it's on the recipe doesn't mean you can't add some of your own flair. And believe me, you know, the art of cooking, cooking is, you know, really about expressing your passion, whatever you're feeling. Go with it. So that is your peach salsa that we're going to be introducing on top of the whole thing a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out back into and we're going to talk about the So what we do have here is a pork loin. Okay, this has already been seasoned by me. Uh, on the recipe page, it says for garlic salt, a little bit of Italian seasoning, oregano, and some black pepper, right? That's really all you need um, for any kind of meat steak. You know, if pork is not your thing, you can use chicken, you can use fish, whatever you really want with the salsa. The salsa by itself is great. I mean, it, it's, you know, it can go on any kind of protein that you want. Um, so for the pork loin, I have olive oil, uh, salt, pepper, oregano already rubbed on here. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can cook the meat. Today we're going to be showcasing, uh, we're going to sear the pork loin. You can grill it, um, you can do a lot of things, you can cut it, you can do a little bit of uh, different techniques if you want. Uh, the reason why I'm going to go ahead and sear the meat is when you talk about searing protein, any protein that is fish, chicken, pork, beef, you're searing in the flavor, okay, and also you're going to sear in the moisture. So if I just took this pork loin and I threw it in the oven at 350 or 400, you know, that juice is going to come out of the meat and it's going to be dry, right? So if I put it on a flat top and I sear it in, you're getting flavor, locking in that moisture, and then go into the oven. So that's what we're going to zoom in on next. And we're going to demonstrate that real quick. So we're going to take the camera. <laughs> like I said, you can do this in your house. This is a studio apartment. So we're going to flat top this guy. So this is a high heat flat top. You know, you can buy these at Walmart, wherever you want to go. They're like 30 bucks. I love these things. So many things on these flat tops. And you really want to have it high heat. You want to hear that sizzle. If you can hear the sizzle, that noise means the moisture is coming out of the pork. That's what you want to hear. If you just put the meat on here while it's uh, not hot, you're just going to boil and you're just not going to get that, that crust that you want. You're not going to seal in that flavor. So while that's going, we're going to go back to me. Let that meat kind of cook a little bit. I just wanted to briefly talk about the uh, pork loin. Okay? So they do recommend the temperature wise if you have you know, issues with uh, medium or well done. It says to cook pork to 160. Now, in the kitchen, I never cook it to 160. You can get away with 145 or 150, depending on your preference. You know, 160, in my opinion, is going to be well done. Uh, it'll be safe to eat no matter what. But you can cook to medium rare. You want that nice little pink on the inside to preserve the tenderness and also the flavor. If you go all the way, I guarantee it's going to be tough. tough meat, so you really have to stay away from that. We're going to go zoom in on the pork loin once again. I think we're going to flip. My lovely assistant with her camera. <laughs> so we're just going to flip that guy over. Nice little brown crust on that. Kind of gauge the time, about three to five on each side. It really depends on the thickness of the meat. This is a pretty, pretty big guy right there. It just smells amazing. I wish you guys were in here. I wish we could do like smell a vision and do something, but <laughs> not yet. Now, if you want to grill this, you're more than welcome to grill it outside. Uh, pretty much the same technique hot grill, seasoned well. 
throw it on there, you're searing it each side. Super flavorful. I can smell it. It smells so good. Make sure you get all the sides. Okay, we're gonna flip that again. So amazing. Love that sound. All right, we're gonna kill the heat. Get a nice, beautiful crust. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go on to our prepared cookie sheet. You can use foil or parchment. I chose parchment paper. Okay, get that beautiful pork wing. Lovely. We're gonna go into the oven, 350. In the oven, probably about 20 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on it. If you have the temperature gauge, go ahead and plug that into the thermometer. How are we doing so far? You guys can comment if you'd like. Are we getting hungry? How are we doing, Tom? Hey, Brandon, uh, real good. We are doing good. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question. Absolutely. Uh, the, um, the, I forget what you call it, the grill uh, that you had. What yes. temperature did you heat that up to? So that temperature was a high heat. I usually go as high as it can go. Um, I'm always watching for the smoke point, which means you'll see smoke, a little bit of steam coming off of it. It means it's hot. Uh, that temperature, I believe, was about 375. On your okay. Okay, and three to five minutes on each side. Yes, you're really listening for that moisture, that nice crackle and sizzle. And just remember that when you're cooking, you have control over temperature and time, right? So you're in control of that. Just keep an eye on it, uh, looking for that, that crust as well, that nice golden brown color. And then you can keep it. So that's one of the things you want to look out for when you're searing meat. Thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome. Right. So we do have our salsa made, right? And I do have a little bit of arugula. This is a nice little presentation that I'm going to show you. Um, I chose arugula just because the arugula has a little bit of a peppery note that's going to accelerate the flavors of that pork loin that we're about to slice when it comes out of the oven. So just a nice little chef plating for you. You don't have to get fancy. I just chose that little green color to offset. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the pork loin out of the oven with the magic of television. So here we have a finished pork loin. Just amazing. Nice and juicy. You can give it a little bit of a feel to kind of test uh, if it's medium, medium rare. It's about medium right now. And one of the biggest things about, you know, searing meat is the resting period, right? So why do we rest the meat, right? So if we just pull this out of the oven and cut into it immediately, all that juice is going to run everywhere and you're going to have a dry product. So when you're resting meat, whether it be chicken, beef, pork, fish, um, really give it, you know, five to ten minutes. Let that juice kind of just go back into the meat. Absorbed. Very, very important. Um, you can throw a piece of aluminum foil to keep it hot while it's resting. I recommend that as well. This one has already been resting out of the oven. I've had it for a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in and we're going to slice this bad boy. Just amazing. Just slice into it. Nice, thin, small slices. You can see all that coming off. Just amazing piece of meat right here. Now, I like to slice it on a bias. I'm not slicing up and down, I'm going on a curved angle. So, there we have a juicy. And it's still got some life into it. I'm going to flip this guy around for you. 
just an amazing piece of meat. And really, it takes little or no time to execute. From start to finish, you can do this in a half hour. That's amazing. So, uh, Brandon, I'm noticing the end pieces, which is a, a you know, typical, you know, they seem to be, um, you know, kind of uniform in color uh, inside. And then in, towards the center, it's a little more pink, it looks like to me. Absolutely. Um, and um, that it would be about medium rare or just medium? So when you have the piece of meat, the outside is always going to be a little more well done. Yeah. And that goes with cooking large pieces of meat as well. Uh, the inside is always going to be more medium, medium rare. You can get that. And then the outside you can cut off if somebody wants a little more well done. Great. And do you, uh, you typically use a meat thermometer when you're cooking to make sure you're getting it to the right internal temperature? Sometimes I do. If it's a really large piece of meat, um, like a chicken, whole chickens, you know, like a large pot roast, whatever it may be, I use a meat thermometer. Prime rib especially is important for that. Um, but as you get more in tune with meat, you can kind of just open the oven and give it a, a feel on okay. what temperature you're at. That's just, that goes along with experience as well. Yeah. Great, thanks. You're very welcome. I'm super excited. We're going to plate this pork loin. So we have our meat. And we are just going to put a little bit on top of this arugula right here. We're just going to kind of fan it out. Nice and simple, right? And that's about medium, medium rare in the middle right there. I like it because it's more juicy better texture, better flavor. And then to that, I'm gonna stir up the salsa here. And we're just gonna spoon a little bit on top right here. It's all personal preference on how much salsa you want. You still wanna be able to see that lovely pork loin. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. A little bit of salt and pepper. And that extra virgin olive oil that I had, I'm just going to go ahead and liven it up just a touch. Give it some life. And there you have it, folks. That is your seared pork loin with a late summer peach 